Hey everyone, I have been testing Ven 2.1 scale for the last few days. Honestly, it's better than Ven 2.2 animate. But when I tried it for the first time, frankly speaking, I got a bit frustrated. I kept getting a static shot and the camera just doesn't move. Or when I tried to generate a longer video, it just crashed my memory. So I created a new workflow and changed specific settings to get that cinematic movement and keep it running fast. In this video, we are going to talk about how to fix the camera problem using the Uni3C control net. And I'll show you how to generate unlimited animation without crashing and the correct math you need to use so your character doesn't turn into a giant mess. But before we open the workflow, we need to talk about the files. You'll see names like BF16, NFP8 and GGF. So let me break it down exactly what I'm using in this workflow so you do not download the wrong things and crash your system. First is the main model. You'll see a version called BF16. This is the full and uncompressed model. It's massive and it's around 32 GBs. Unless you have a 4090, do not download this model. I am using the FP8 version here. It's compressed file, much smaller than the 32 GB version, coming in around uh, something like uh, 16 GB. The quality is basically the same as the big one. You might also see a GGF version. These files are great if you have low VRAM, like 12 GB. They are super compressed. You can try Q4 or Q5 which are around 11 to 12 GBs. In my most cases, you'll get a similar result like BF16. For this workflow, I prefer to use FP8 and that's because it runs smooth. The second file I use is LoRa. I am using the Light X2V Video LoRa. The specific file for this workflow is 256 dim bf16 version if you have low vram you can also go with rank 32 or rank 64 you just have to select this file based on your system's memory without this lora you have to generate at 30 steps but with this lora you need only four steps now let's talk about the third file which is text encoder these are the same files we used in our previous workflow. And for this, I used BF16. So load of us try the FP8 version to save space. But here in this model, I found a compressed text encoder. Sometimes ignore complex instructions. So try to go with BF16 if your system supports it. And it understands your prompt very well. The fourth file I used is the Ven 2.1 Uni3C Control Net FP16. This file reads your camera movement from your reference video. And finally, the VAE file. We use the same file which we used in our previous workflow. Now let's talk about the workflow. So here you can see, this is the workflow I just created. At the top, you'll see the Quen VL group. Instead of writing prompts by hand, I just set the Quen VL so it looks at your reference image and writes the prompt for you. You'll see a string concatenate node connected to Quen VL. I just wrote a base prompt focused on camera awareness. So it forces the AI to describe the motion and explicitly 
tell when to point one to move the camera. If you want camera movement, there is one thing you must know. When 2.1 is trained on static cameras. If you really want a professional camera movement, you have to force it. That's why I added a when video uni 3c control net loader to this workflow. I just connect the reference video to this node. It extracts the camera path, the pan, the tilt and the zoom. Next. If you want to generate an unlimited length video, but the model gives you only 5 seconds, here is a new node that can help you. It's the when video context options node in the middle of the workflow. So I have set the context length to 81. You can also go with 41 if you have low VRAM. And set the overlap to 8. If you have low VRAM like 8 GB, you can still generate unlimited length video using this method. But the problem is the first frame. You have to trim the first frame because it doesn't look right. So basically, if you have a good GPU, set the context frame to 81 and make the overlap 16. This 16 overlap gives the model enough room to blend the chunks so you do not see any seams. I also set the fusion method from linear to pyramid. If you try other official workflows, you can see the fusion method is set to linear. But I suggest you try pyramid. This keeps the center of your video sharp by blending the edges. Finally, let's talk about the speed. I set the workflow to force it to generate 16 FPS. Do not change this. Even if your video is 30 FPS, do not change this. We'll fix this part later. When 2.1 is trained in 16 FPS, and to fix the speed, I added a RIFE VFI node. I set it to multiply by 2. First, the model gives me a 16 FPS frame. Then I double that using this node to 32 frames per second. So it fills the gap. This means you only render 81 frames and it will use less VRAM. But at the end, you will get a smooth result that looks like 30 FPS. It cuts your render time in half. There is another option to increase the speed. As you know, I used the LightX LoRa in my workflow. If you are using LightX LoRa, do not use Tcache. There is a node called Tcache. You have to bypass it. If you, if you use Tcache with this LoRa, it removes too much details when you are doing only 6 steps. So just leave it unplugged. Now let's come to the example. This is the first example. Here is a video where a woman is walking in the airport. The woman is around 330 frames at 30 FPS. So it's an 11 second video. But I set the force rate to 16. I, and I uploaded the reference image, which is a cartoon image of a wolf woman holding a shield, which was also generated with AI. So here is the Quen VL, which has written the prompt for me. And here is the result. After the rife node, you can see how good the animation is. The background is not static. The wolf woman walks towards the camera like the video. And it looks very good. Quality wise, there is no animation problem and everything looks clear. Now I try to generate a long length video. So I uploaded a video of a dancer and the video is around 26 seconds. So we just have to check if it tracks every motion correctly or not. The motion is very hard to capture, but we have to check it. For this, I use another image. Here is an anime girl. 
every setting is the same and I just hit run. Now we have got the result. You can see it has generated a 20 second video. No color drift, nothing. After it passes from the right node, it's now 30 FPS. You can see the animation is exactly perfectly captured and the result looks very good. Now let's just try another example. I just uploaded a video of a street fighter game. There are two people fighting. It's a fighting scene which is around 60 FPS video and has 258 frames. If I want 60 FPS output, I just go to Rife node and change the multiply from 2 to 4. I just upload a reference image where there are two characters. One is a guy on the right side and another one is a girl. We want to capture the motion from the video and make these two characters fight each other. So we just set everything same as it is, nothing to change and I just hit run. Now as a result, you can see how perfectly they have generated the result. It has captured the same moves which we uploaded in the reference image. You can look at the motion animation and everything looks good. So this is the final result. The motion is correctly captured from the video and the fighting scene every moment looks the same. There is no color distortion or anything. So that's all for today's video. If you like this video, Please subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Thank you. Bye-bye.